At age 23, I made over $200,000 playing poker. Join me on this journey in real time, starting from one single $300 buy-in at 1-2 to a game in Vegas where we buy in for $50,000. Here's where we're at now. Let's go. There we are. What's up, guys? Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome to day five of the Back to Zero Challenge. In this one, we are gonna be playing one two once again. In our last video, we won around 800 bucks, putting our bankroll at 1300 or so. When we get to 3000, we're gonna hop into the two five game. Until then, we are going to be playing one two. Granted, if we could have a similar session that we had last time, that would be literally ideal, but obviously, you know, you never know. One thing to note too is last session, I think we played like seven hours. Played definitely more than what I'm normally used to playing which is around four hours. So anything longer than that, that's when it gets kind of sloppy on my end. Start making more mistakes, something that I'm working on. And uh, the fact that we played, you know, six and a half to seven hours and played at least decent throughout the entire session is a win in itself. So probably not gonna play that long today, but even if we do, hopefully we can have the same mental strength to push through. All right, guys, let's get in there for our $300 buy-in and hopefully have another good session. Let's go guys. The first hand of the night is not a pretty one. We have king six offsuit on the button straddle. There's one limp and I decide to check my action. I don't think there's anything else we can do. The flop comes ahead and goes three, four, six with two diamonds. The limper now bets $15 into a pot of $10, so he over bets the pot with top pair and a really good kicker. We decide to make the call. The turn now is the five of diamonds, putting a four liner on the board, but now we also have a straight flush draw. He pumps the brakes and checks, and even though we do have a pair, I don't think he's ever gonna be checking a straight or a flush on this board, so I think this is probably a pretty good card to start bluffing on. I don't think I have to bet too big. I bet $20 and he decides to make the call. The river is a brick for the most part. It comes a nine of hearts and he checks it once again. He has around $100 in a stack. And once again, I don't think he's ever checking any really strong hands here. So I decided to put him all in for around $100. And after thinking for quite some time, he eventually decides to fold. This next hand, there is another button straddle. We have pocket threes. We decide to limp and we end up going four ways to a flop. The flop comes two, three, four with two clubs and one spade. We go ahead and flop middle set. It checks to me and I decide to bet $15 and we only see one caller from a player in early position. The turn is probably the single worst card in the deck. It comes the ace of clubs putting the straight on the board and there's also a flush on the board as well. So when he goes ahead and leads out now for $20, I don't think we can get away with raising so I just decide to make the call, praying that the board pairs here on the river. Actually, I take that back. We also can take a five of clubs, which would give us a straight flush. The river peels, and unfortunately it is none of those cards. It is a red nine. He now decides to check it, and I'm looking at my hand. His set is obviously very strong, but on this board, I really don't feel too confident about it. Can't think of too many hands I will call that are worse than ours. So I decide to check it back, and he has maybe one of the few hands that would have called a bet. He has ace nine offsuit for top two pair. A set is gonna be beating two pair, so we take this one down. This next hand is one of the craziest hands I've played in a while. We have five, six offsuit in the big blind. We go, I believe, five ways to a flop, which comes ace jack four rainbow. Action checks around. The turn is a offsuit seven, so now we have an open-ended straight draw, but action once again checks around. Now the river is an offsuit eight. So we go ahead and bank our straight. We have the second nuts only losing to nine ten. Being first to act in the big blind, I decide to check it, praying somebody bets. Luckily, one player in middle position does bet. He bets $15, which is over the size of the pot. I think there was only $10 in the pot, if I remember correctly. One player in middle position calls the 15, and now it's time to spring the trap. I make it $70. The middle position player looks at my stack, looks at the wager, and now it looks like he has a decision on his mind whether it is to call or fold. After thinking for around 45 seconds, he does neither of those, and now he puts in another raise to $225. 
the other player folds and I really need y'all's help on this one what would you guys do in the spot once again we have the second nuts we check raised him on the river but now we're getting raised once again normally in low stake games this is never a bluff so the question is could he ever be doing this with a hand that we beat maybe he's doing this with the same hand but obviously that's unlikely considering we have two of the cards that he needs so once again guys please let me know in the comments what you would do here I eventually decide to fold, figuring that he's never doing this as a bluff, and we get shown the same exact hand. 5-6. Ugh, obviously a frustrating one, but I think in the long run, more times than not, he's probably going to have the nuts here. This is another pretty sick hand. Under the gun limps, we're in the plus one position with two eights. We decide to make it $12. The player in the small blind calls, and now the big blind bumps it up to $35. Under the gun folds, and we each have a good amount of chips to play with. I think I have around 400 and he maybe has around 350. So I decide to make the call and the small blind player gets out of the way and folds. We're off to see a flop, which comes ace 3-3 three, three with two spades. Now the big blind player continues with a wager of $30. Obviously eights, not, a, not the best board considering there's an ace out there, but I think if he has tens, jacks, queens, kings, I think he's going to be likely to shut down here on the turn. So I think I can float one in position, planning on barreling and taking it down on a turn if he does check it over to me. So I decide to call 30 and we're off to see a turn which is <laughs> extremely unexpected. It comes the eight of spades. Not only do we hit a extremely disguised full house, but it also puts the flush on the board. Obviously, we no longer need to turn our hand into a bluff. Unfortunately though, he now decides to pump the brakes in check. Well, we are certainly not gonna be checking this one behind with a hand as strong as ours and as disguised as ours, we wanna be putting in as much money as possible. I don't wanna bet too big though, so I decide to bet $50 targeting any ace x or maybe any pair big pair rather with a spade figuring that his flush draw is live but little does he know it is not i'm happy to see him call the 50 and we're off to see a river which is the queen of spades not the best card in the world as now we lose to pocket queens and if he has an ace without a spade it may be harder to get some value but on the other hand if he has a hand such as kings with a spade this might be the best card in the deck so whether it's a good card or a bad card I really don't know, but I am ecstatic to see him slide out $120, leaving himself with around $120 behind. I think we only have one real play here. If he has queens, so be it. If he has slow played aces, so be it. We're all in with the full house. I go all in for his remaining $120, $240 total, and unfortunately he snap folds. So I guess that ended up being a good river from his perspective to bluff on, and it probably got us the max. Let's go. A few hands later, I'm still racking up my chips from the prior hand. We have two black twos in the big blind. We see four limps to me, and I decide to check my action. The flop comes two, three, nine with two diamonds. <laughs> Obviously the best flop. We are running extremely hot so far, hitting set after set. I think like half the hands on this vlog so far have been sets. That being said though, we have a really strong hand. I'm gonna be betting. I decide to bet $10, we go ahead and see two callers. The turn now looks like a pretty good card. It comes to the eight of spades. I think this card may possibly give them some two pairs if they have a hand such as nine, eight, or what I think is probably more likely is that they now could have some combo draws if they have a hand such as queen, jack of diamonds, jack, 10 of diamonds, maybe like five, six of diamonds, those kind of hands. That being said though, if I bet big, I just don't think they're gonna be folding when they pick up more equity. So I decide to bet pot, I bet $40 and we only see one caller. Praying that the river is a brick, and it kind of is a brick. It comes the ace of hearts. With that being said though, I'm happy to see the flush draw brick. Obviously, I'm more than confident that we still have the best hand. So I'm gonna bet big. Sure, I guess we could check it sometimes, praying that he bluffs a missed flush draw, or we could bet ourselves targeting maybe a 9X or a ace that flopped the flush draw and now river top pair. I don't think he's gonna be folding if that's the case. So I decided to bet $120, I bet the size of the pot once again, and he pretty quickly folds, claiming that he had a flush draw. In this next one, we go ahead and see two limps. Action's on me in late position, and I make it 15 with eight, nine of clubs. We see the button cold call the 15, and now one of the limpers calls as well. 
Going three ways to a flop, or we go ahead and flop top pair. It comes 6-8-2 with two spades. Very wet board. Checks to me, and normally I would be betting my top pair. But it's good to switch it up every once in a while. I decide to check, and now the button makes it $25. It folds to me, and we did not check to fold a top pair. So, pretty easy call. The turn now looks like a pretty good card. It comes another six. If we were still ahead, we're likely still ahead. And if we're behind, we are likely still behind. I check it and now he puts out a larger wager. He decides to make it $50. Obviously with all the draws on the board and by checking our top pair on the flop, I still don't think we can fold quite yet. So I'm gonna be tossing in the chips once again for the call, praying that we don't see a spade or some sort of straight cards here on the river. And the five of spades is probably one of the worst cards. I don't think there's any point in leading here. I check it and he snap checks it back and turns over pocket queens. Wow. Okay. Well, that could have been way worse. Nice hand. Last hand of the night. I want to preface. I'm not too proud of this one. There's a few limps and the button now makes it $20. One of my friends who doesn't really get out of line too much. I decide to call in the small blind with ace queen of clubs. Once again, normally I would be raising this, but my gut is telling me that he has a strong hand here. Well, another reason why this is probably not good is now the whole table pretty much calls. We're gonna be going five ways to a flop where we go ahead and at least flop a pretty good hand. It comes queen three, three. With top pair, top kicker, can't be too upset at this flop. It now checks to the initial raiser who continues for 20. Obviously a very small bet but I don't think there's too much point in raising here. Sure, we can get some protection against like a hand that has a king in it, but I'm just gonna call and all the other players fold. The turn comes a 10, I check it once again, and when he checks it back, now I'm almost certain that we do in fact have the best hand. The river now is a offsuit nine. Doesn't change too much, I don't think. Sure, king jack is now a straight, but if he has that, I would imagine he would probably be betting the turn so pretty sure once again that we do have the best hand here. I think all that we lose too is like pocket nines or maybe, see, I don't even think he has pocket tens. He's probably betting the turn. So like the only hand that we lose to here is like pocket nines. So I'm going to be betting targeting some random pairs that he may have. I decide to bet $60. Now the player on the button decides to raise it up to $150. Ugh. Obviously a super sick spot, similar to the other one, just figuring that He's probably never bluffing here. And the question is, is he ever doing this with hands that we beat? And I just think the answer is no. I don't imagine he's ever doing this with king, queen, queen, jack, like these kind of hands. I just don't think he's ever doing this with these hands. So at the end of the day, I just don't think he's really bluffing here often enough. So I decide to fold and he does have one of the hands, if not the hand that we thought he had, pocket nines. So obviously a good fold on our end, but this whole situation could have been avoided if we just played the hand appropriately. I think flatting preflop was probably our first mistake. Nonetheless though, we saved ourselves some money there on the river. Once again, I'm frustrated with how I played this one in the moment. We're up a good bit on the session, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the cage, cash down, and get ready for the next day of the bankroll challenge. All right guys, I have a confession. After the one, two game, I was getting ready to leave. And then I wanted to say bye to my friend, Joey, who's playing the two, five game. And a guy of course just gets up right when I'm saying hello to Joey. And I had just figured I'd play for like 20 minutes because Joey, he lives up North and he's heading back soon. And I just, you know, to hang out with him for a little bit. Four hours later, we're leaving the casino and we're down $2,000. Just silly. I'll be the first to admit, I did not play my best. Um, <laughs> this is so silly. It's. I think the frustrating part is that I won't be able to get the money back because this number is not related to the bankroll challenge. But playing, you know, the one, two games until our bankroll gets to 3,000, we're gonna be stuck at one, two. And I think now after today, we're maybe at 1,400 or so. So the point I'm making is that it's not like we can hop back into the 2-5 game tomorrow. We're going to be playing 1-2, building the bankroll for the challenge. It's kind of goes against the whole challenge, you know. We're starting from zero, but it's unrelated. It was off camera, and it's just frustrating. But hey, it is what it is. It was the decision I made, and it just did not go that well. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Day number five. I'm getting the days mixed up now. I think it's day number five. Who knows? But anyways, guys, appreciate you for tuning in as always. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.